the great news is uh, that we're here to worship God. We can do that freely together. On your pew sheet, you'll see, look at that amazing title of our service, The End of Death. What could be more wonderful than that? And a verse from our Bible reading, The Lord Almighty will swallow up death forever. Now, as you know, it's Advent. Is there anybody under 13 who can tell me what the word Advent means? I've been working hard on this. Who can tell me what the word Advent means? Any offers? Any offers with, yes. Well done, thank you very much. It means coming, and we're looking forward to celebrating his, Jesus' his first coming at Christmas, and his coming again at the end of time. So, um, you'll see there that it's, it's where we have a wonderful Advent wreath, and Joe here, who's later on going to be baptised and confirmed, is going to light three, if I stand up, this is Joe here, is going to light for us three purple candles. And let's stand up as, we do, as he does that. Can we stand up? She's going to light them, and then we're going to join together in the prayer of the day, which is on the front of your pew sheet. So if you can pick up your pew sheet as well while he's lighting. And in a moment, we're going to join together in the prayer of the day, which we can probably put on the screen there, brilliant. Well done, Joe. Well thank you. It's clickers working. Let's join together in that prayer. It's on the pew sheet. It's also in front of you on the screen. Let's say it together. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now, one of the great Advent hymns, because it's all about Jesus and light, and think of Chris Dingles. We had a great Chris Dingles service in here last week. Is shine, Jesus, shine. So we're going to, or the choir are going to sing really loudly, Lord, the light of your love is shining. The rest of you are going to mouth the words and pretend you're singing. So we're going to make a great sound as we think about Jesus, the light of the world. to clap. 
The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. What we're going to do now, because I think you might need a bit of extra time getting yourself sorted going over to Sunday schools, we'll sing our next hymn straight away, if that's okay. We've, we'll leave the Bible reading later on. And it might well be that um, in the, uh, perhaps by the last verse, you might like to be moving out over there. Does that sound good? Um, so we're going to sing... So. Th- when this is going to come down, and we'll take the children out, so we'll just look out for her. Well, should we say the last verse? How many? Are there three verses? How many verses? Yes, so the beginning of the last verse, if the children like to start socially distancing, moving to the door, looking out for Liz, who will be at the bottom of the stairs, to take you over to the school for your classes. Um, and the people who have a stay for confirmation afterwards, they have a choice of either coming or staying? That, whichever you think. Okay. All, all go over. Okay, that's fine. Um, so th- this is going to do a th- one of the Advent themes is joy. So w- this is why we're singing this song, particularly for the ch- children are going to sing it. But joy, actually, you'll see how well it fits in with heaven because I'm talking about heaven. So probably this is too. We're going to do joy to the world. The choir is singing that. And do look at the words. They're great. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Thank you. sit down. Emily, you're not going, are you? Because I want you to... Does Emily think she's going over there? Is, is Emily essential? <laughs> are you allowed, able to stay for the size people bit? Is that okay? I think they've got enough people. Right, that's okay, we're all here. Right, that's excellent. Right, we're going to have our Bible reading next. Peter, did we conclude how we're going to do this? Peter, Bible reading? What's the situation? Do we have a person in mind? We do. And that would be? That would be. <laughs> <laughs> no, Barbara was going to, but then I told you that this was. Sorry about the miscommunication here, right? Okay. So let me just explain about this Bible reading, which Jane is very kindly about to read to us. 
if you look inside your pew sheet, you'll see it printed there. We've had, we're having some serious, all of our sermons in Advent are going to be on Isaiah. Isaiah is the prophet that looks forward both to the first coming of Jesus. Think of bits like unto us a child is born, that great carol service one comes from Isaiah, and also a great vision of heaven. And this is very much a vision of heaven from Isaiah 25. Thank you, Jane. The reading this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 9, and also chapter 26, 1 to 6. <clears throat> On this mountain, the Lord God Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord, we trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. He humbles those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low. He levels it to the ground and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed, the footsteps of the poor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jane. So sermons, we always begin with a prayer. This time I'm actually going to use a Bible verse, which is indeed a prayer, the Bible. It's actually the very penultimate verse of the whole Bible. It's the penultimate verse of the book of Revelation. So it's one of the prayers of the first Christians, and it goes like this. Simply, come, Lord Jesus. I'll say it again. Let's pray it again. Come, Lord Jesus. And we might say it together. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. I did wonder whether to keep the children for the first bit of this sermon. It didn't quite work because I was going to start off with um, reading you a little bit of Twas the Night Before Christmas, which we always read to our children when they were little on Christmas Eve. And I don't know whether any of you do that. It's a great poem and it's something they look, my children all look back on and did have started doing with, with their children as well. In fact, the year six is... A, Michael's, I used it on their worship on Tuesday, so they, they've heard it anyway. But it, it goes like this, and uh, 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 mum and parents who are there, you might, uh, might tell, uh, talk to your children about it afterwards because it fits in wonderfully with Advent. Let me remind you, just put, put your hand if you know Twas the Night Before Christmas. How many of you know it? Quite a lot. Okay, if you don't, it's a great poem. Let me recommend it. It goes like this. Twas the night before Christmas... When all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their head. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap, when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter. I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St Nick. And for those in the front, you can see the uh, uh, reindeer and the sleigh in the sky. I have a Christian, well, takeoff is not quite the right word, rework maybe is better of the poem, which is called Twas the Night Before Jesus Came. Remember, we're talking about Advent. And Twas the Night Before Jesus Came is obviously written on this basis, but it's actually quite a sobering poem. Will you I'm not reading it all to you, I'm just reading the very first bit and the last verse. It goes like this. 
"'Twas the night before Jesus came, and all through the house, not a creature was praying, not one in the house. Their Bibles were laying on the shelf without care, not a thought that Jesus would ever came there. When out of the east there arose such a clatter, I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the windows I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. When what to my wondering eyes should appear, but angels proclaiming that Jesus was here, with a light like the sun sending forth a bright ray, I knew in a moment that this was the day. The light of his face made me cover my head. It was Jesus returning, just like he'd said. And though I possessed worldly wisdom and wealth, I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. Then it ends. In the words of this poem, the meaning is clear. The coming of Jesus is drawing quite near. We must begin right now to study and pray so that we will be ready on that glorious day. Quite a sobering uh, challenge there. But it is actually the Advent theme. Advent, as you've been reminded, means coming, not countdown to Christmas at all, um, not primarily even preparing for Jesus' first coming incognito at Christmas, but it's about the second coming of Jesus, not in secret, but in glory publicly, in a way that no one can doubt when the time for decision is over. The second coming of Jesus ushers in the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. It means the end of this world, the end of this universe as we know it ushering in a new wonderful world, a new creation of hope and joy. Advent is solemn, serious, painful, but at the same time it's wonderful, eternal, full of joy. We're looking, as I said, at this passage in Isaiah, which Jane has just read for us, and that passage here contains all these great themes of judgment and joy, but of also life and death, or maybe death and life. And I think you'll probably agree that for all of us, those themes, those great themes of life and death, are all in some way going to be heightened this coming Christmas, which may be for all of us here, for some of you very much so, but for maybe for all of us, more painful than we could ever have imagined. This chapter of Isaiah, chapter 25, is a poem about heaven, and it's about the joy of the righteous on the day of judgment. And it's a joy that calls for a great party, a banquet, in celebration of the Lord for whom we have waited. I wonder if the passage made you think of some of the other banquets or parties in the Bible. There's the one at the end of Psalm 23, about he prepares a table before me. Or what about the great banquet that Jesus talks about several times? We have this vision of wonderful food and goodies, much better than any of the Christmas adverts, which are multifair, multifair for the moment, much better than any of those could have dreamed up. And I want you to hang on to that thought, that heaven is like the best party feast you can ever imagine. The best Christmas family meal, perhaps, but actually much, much better than all of that. And just think about that wonderful promise of a feast of food and wine, which is A, totally free and requires no preparation. That also should hit home at this time. And we're celebrating, the banquet is about celebrating something that seems against all our experience and knowledge, but is at the heart of the Christian faith that death has been destroyed. Did you, that, did you notice that wonderful verse? It talks about, on this moment, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds everyone, the sheet that covers all nations. And that great line, he will swallow up death forever. Can you imagine it? Can you believe it? It is at the heart of our faith. It is the gospel, which means good news, the thing that most of us spend much of our lives dreading when we can bear ourselves to think about it. 
That death is no longer to be feared, says our passage. And why? Because of what Jesus has done, because of his death and resurrection. I know you all know the hymn, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Do you remember that verse in it which says, Death of death and hell's destruction. That's another fabulous line. Death of death. Death has died. That's what Jesus, the great Redeemer, has done for us on the cross. He has defeated death, destroyed the power of hell. It's the Easter message, the best message of all. Jesus is risen, he's alive. And it's also the message of Advent, our Redeemer, our Saviour, who is going to restore, destroy death is born. His first coming, he died on the cross to save us and rose from the dead. And now he will come again in triumph, in glory as our judge and our king. Come, Lord Jesus, those first Christians prayed, and so should we. And as we, but as we join in that prayer of the first Christians, come, Lord Jesus, I'm sure you, like me, will have been brought up sharp. You're thinking, well, actually, do I really want that anyway? I'd actually much rather continue having a good life here as it is. And maybe even more important, am I ready for Jesus to come? Are you ready? Am I ready to meet our King and our Judge? We all have an invitation to this great banquet, the great party that Isaiah talks about. Are we ready? Now, there is one sense in which no one of us can ever be ready. None of us deserves heaven. That's where grace and forgiveness come in. Once any of us start saying, either of ourselves or of one of our loved ones, I'm sure we or they will be okay because they've lived a good life. Then we've missed the point totally. None of us, says the Bible, it couldn't be clearer, none of us can ever deserve heaven. None of us are good enough, whatever we do. We've all gone wrong in all sorts of ways with our selfishness, our pride and so on. We can only make it to heaven, to the great banquet because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. He loved us, he died for us, he has done the work. We have to accept it, to trust him, to hand our lives over to him. And if you look back at our passage, that's what our, the second half of our reading is all about. It tells us how we do that, how we get ourselves ready for heaven. And if you look at the lovely verse in the middle, when it says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. That is really an amazing promise. You will keep in perfect peace the mind who is steadfast, whose mind is stayed, one of the old translations, stayed on you, on thee. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we trust him now? How do we fix our eyes on Jesus? Well, obviously, the first thing we probably have to do is to start by making time for him. I'm quite sure some of you are doing this already, but just reflect, have you made enough time? Find a spare time. Find a Bible in modern English, if you haven't got one for a start, you might want to take an Advent, if you're not actually reading the Bible at the moment at all, if you're honest, in midweek, take one of the Advent books. I've given up, these are the free ones from the diocese. I've got um, um, a few more. If you'd like one and I run out, I can certainly order some more. They sent them straight away last time. They are very good, a little bit of passage to, to read every day and then a thought on it. Or at the back of your pew sheet, you'll see Stan has given you some other suggested readings from the lectionary to read. If you don't know what to read, there's another place to start. So make sure you're reading and listening to God's word it, and make sure you're talking to him. We can talk to God, you know this, any place, any time. Tell Jesus how you feel. However cross, angry, frustrated, scared you feel, tell him. Start the conversation. And then gradually you will begin to trust him more and learn more about that amazing promise of perfect peace. Let us pray as we sit.
You will keep in perfect peace the person whose mind is steadfast and trust you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this amazing promise of perfect peace, which we long for so much. We ask for your strength to keep our minds fixed on you and trusting in you. And so we pray, make us ready for your coming again in glory. Come, Lord Jesus. And let's say that prayer together. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so now we're going to do something a little unusual, but that's the thing that most of you know about. First of all, um, we're going to, um, I think it's called admit, yes, I'm going to admit our church orders. Now, normally only archdeacons could do this, so this is a very exciting moment. Because of COVID, archdeacons are not doing their visitation, so it's the incumbent that has to admit the church wardens. So we have here um, Jock, who's been church wardens down here for some time, and Jane, who has joined him. And let me just say that um, uh, the PCC have also appointed Barbara, who is here as uh, Deputy Church Warden. Um, so she'll be taking on some of their duties, but she's not official yet, so she doesn't have to do this swearing in bit. <laughs> so um, I have to read out what the Archdeacon was normally said, and then the Church Wardens have to, um, in order to be admitted to the Office of Church Wardens, they have to respond to each question. So they've got the text, so let's, let's do that uh, now. Church wardens are called to represent the people of God, to work with the leadership of the parish ordained and lay, to be an example and encouragement to their fellow Christians and to promote unity and peace. Jock and Jane, as you come to be admitted, I ask you to affirm your commitment to this calling and to seek God's grace and the power of his Holy Spirit to fulfil it. Will you, as church wardens, seek to work with the bishop, parish priest, the parochial church council, and all those who exercise leadership in your parish to further the mission of God and his purposes in the world? I will, the Lord be my helper. Will you undertake your task as a spiritual calling and seek through the power of the Holy Spirit to promote true religion, unity and peace? I will. Will you care for the fabric and property of the church as stewards under God and make it your responsibility to ensure its proper up upkeep and repair? I will, the Lord be my helper. God give you grace to serve him with dedication, cheerfulness and humility and may his all-powerful spirit direct your paths through the coming year through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm then going to uh, pray, and then um, each of them has to make the following declaration. Let's pray as we sit. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Jock and Jane and their willingness to serve you in this way. We thank you for all the church wardens who have gone before and those who continue to support faithfully and help. But we especially pray for Jock and Jane, now that you will enfold them with your love and enable you to serve, enable them to serve you faithfully in all that they do. Amen. Amen. So, presumably, you can say it together the next bit. Is that right? Yeah, okay, off you go. <laughs> we all say it together. Hmm? All, all the church wardens say it together. Yes, okay, so off you go. Mm -hmm. I do solemnly and sincerely declare. That I will faithfully and diligently perform the duty of the office of church warden to the best of my skill and understanding. We thank you for being prepared to take up this office, and I admit you to be church wardens in the parish of, of Hall St. Michael in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Right, and then I'll just read the next bit and then you can say something. Everybody joins in the bit after me. I haven't printed all of this out for everybody. The church wardens, when admitted, are officers of the ordinary. That's the bishop. They shall discharge church duties as are by law and custom assigned to them. 
They shall be foremost in representing the laity and cooperating with the incumbent. They shall use their best endeavours by example and precept to encourage the parishioners in the practice of true religion and to promote unity and peace among them. They shall also maintain order and decency in the church and churchyard, especially during the time of divine service. Like that bit. So I'm going to read the sentence and then perhaps you could say it after me because you haven't got it in front of you. Heavenly Father, we embrace your call for us to make disciples. Can you say that? Heavenly Father, we embrace your call for us to make disciples, and it carries on, to be witnesses and to grow leaders. To be witnesses and to grow leaders. Give us the eyes to see your vision. Give us the eyes to see your vision. Ears to hear the prompting of your spirit ears to hear the prompting of your spirit and courage to follow in the footsteps of your son our lord and savior jesus christ and courage to follow in the footsteps of your son our lord and savior jesus christ amen thank you everybody and thank you especially for, for to jock and jane for being prepared to undertake this. So this runs to when the next annual church meeting is, which we assume will probably be normally at the, the end of April, and it's by the first one in May. So we're now going to move on to do something a little bit similar with sides people. If, so if you, because the church won't, you might want to stay where you are for the moment. Have you got, have you got that bit? Shall I give it to you? Um, do you have that paper with you or not? You do. Um, let me just explain, first of all, um, all the COVID stuff has meant that church size people, people welcoming and so on, have got a lot to do, a lot more um, things than they had to do before, and then it's all going to change again. So, and also we've got, because we were closed in the middle, it's been a good time to sort of rethink how we do things. But so before we, I go on to what we're going to be doing, I just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, some people who've been sizemen in this church for a very, very long time, and have now... Uh, step down and hand it over to other people but I just want to thank them for all their years of hard work now we thanked Ken in our in the nine o'clock service um, we're going to thank Ted particularly uh, now and we're also going to thank Beryl is she here oh yes Beryl is there anybody else who's here that I'm that, and Bill <laughs> I keep thinking Bill is so much Bill has been busy doing, I was going to say thank you to the many, been doing lights, I keep, keep thinking he's still, he's still there. And uh, so just wanted to say thank you especially to Bill and Jock because they've been doing mending lights and stuff outside and all sorts of things. And Bill, anybody else that I'm missing? No. So we might just have a round of applause coming just to say thank you for all that they've done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Although we're not allowed to linger, you could ask them enough exactly how many years it's been as sides people. I know Bill's been church warden as well, but you can't, we won't shout out that, but it's been a long time. You ought to have mem we could have something in the magazine, memories of being a sides person way back. That would be quite an interesting article for someone, for someone, for someone to write. Um, and now we're going to sort of commission our new team. Now, this is very much a flexible thing, and we're still deciding quite how, the best way to do this. We've got um, a few people to join the, people, the, the 1030 team, and we've got some... The other thing we very much like to do is to ask some of our families, and particularly the older children, like the ones being confirmed, to sort of help out with some of the seismic duties, sort of handing out hymn books, which, of course, we can't do at the moment, and handing out pew sheets, which we can't do at the moment, and take the collection, which we can't do at the moment. So you can see it's a, it's a very fluid situation. So it has been, it's lovely to have some young uh, families here and people who have said that they're willing to help out from time to time when, when they're there with their children and get the children involved in doing things, of which there were a number of families there here in this, com in this uh, capacity. Um, there is actually an official little service, which we don't quite ha have to use. We have used in this church, and it's rather nice about admitting. Uh, we're, we're, we're moving away from, we're trying to be inclusive here, so we're not just calling them sizemen in Perth. This one's got size men, size women on it, but we've decided to call a person a size person, of which the plural is people. I think that's where we are. So, but we'll probably use different words, so forgive us. 
But I just wanted to say it's a really important role. The most important role of being a sides person is to be welcoming. You are the, you're there and you're welcoming people. And actually, it's quite interesting talking to people, well, like Jane, as she'll tell you, that actually it's the welcome they received when they first came to this church which has made them feel this is where they want to come to. So you can see how important size is. What happens when you come in the door that makes people feel welcome or, or uncomfortable? And obviously here they feel welcome, and that's the most important thing. We need to think about ways of doing this, because increasingly, of course, we get more and more people coming to church who've never been, some of them who've never been to church before, and certainly don't know what to do when they come in and are worried about it. So the more that we can make that easy for them, because we want the people of this community especially to regard this as their church. I'm sure you all agree about that. So what we're going to do is to admit, so if the people, and quite honestly, from the point of view of the, the families here, if you're happy to, just to stand up and be part of this, do if you don't want to do that now, but you just want to sit, but just to say, we, we've said that you're going to be helping out doing things at various points. But if you're happy to stand up, then do. There is a little order of service, but the only thing, I don't think, if you haven't been given it at the moment, all that, needs to, all that has to happen is you have to say, I will the Lord being my helper. You can probably do that without having all the words, which there were a lot of unnecessary words on this piece of paper, but the church, I will ask the church wardens to do their bit. So if you'd like to stand up, those people who know that they're happy to be church sides people, and I need to say that we've got a nine o'clock team, and I commissioned those this morning, led by Margaret Clark. And we have a 10.30 team led by Jill Slinger and Carol Bamba up there. And there are some people here who have definitely um, agreed to be church wardens who are uh, Jean and Scott. Some of them have been... Jean and Scott, and I'm not quite sure who else. Oh, Mandy, Mandy Hughes, Stephen Hughes' wife, has as well, only she's in Denmark at the moment, where she's stuck because of the minks, if you remember, and all of that. And a number of our families who are very ha happy to, uh, to be here and help when, when they can. So our leaders are standing up. Anybody else who feels they're definitely going to do this, please do stand up as well. If I've forgotten anybody, that's great. Thank you. Um, and if you, when it comes to the bit, I'll tell you, you just simply say, I, I will, the Lord being my helper. Now, there's an official prayer at the beginning, which I'm going to read, and then we'll go straight into the two church warden bits. And Lynn, I didn't read out Lynn, thank you. Is there anybody else? The other thing I needed to say was, I mentioned Jean and Scott, didn't I? I hope I did. If I didn't, I'll say it again. Now, Bob at the back, who's obviously a former church warden, is usually here and is always happy to help out. So he's on both lists and is going to be helping out whenever he can. Has anybody else I've forgotten? Margaret. And Margaret. I said Lynn, but I said it again. Lynn, Barbara, and Margaret, excellent, okay. Thank you. So all you need to say is, I will the Lord being my helper, and I'll tell you when. Let's pray first. God, our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son, you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love and give to your servants now to be commissioned the needful gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church wardens are called to represent the people of God, to work with the leadership of the parish of Dane and Lane, to be an example and encouragement to the fellow Christians and to promote unity and peace. Church wardens are to further the mission of God and his purposes for the world, promoting true religion. They are to care for the fabric and property of the church, ensuring its proper upkeep and repair. Sides people are called to assist the church wardens in these various duties. Will you undertake this task as a spiritual calling and seek through the power of the Holy Spirit in word and action to promote true religion, unity and peace? And the answer is, I'll just repeat it, I will, the Lord being my helper. Over to you. I will, the Lord being my helper. So God, may God give you grace to serve him with dedication, cheerfulness and humility, and to support the church wardens with true loyalty. And may God's all-powerful spirit direct your paths throughout the coming year, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you very much, for all of you who've agreed to help in this way. So we're sort of trying to pilot how this has worked. So, and actually, we're going to have to do, do it one way now. We're going to have to shift things when hopefully we get back to normal. And if I could just say that the people who have agreed to do this, if you don't mind staying behind after the service for not more than five minutes or so, we'll uh, give out. And actually, any of, I know some of the families will be anyway waiting for, for children to pick them up. If you want to just stay as well, um, and, and, and we'll just talk you through one or two of the things that how it might work. And actually, any ideas obviously from you are gratefully received. So thank you very much, everybody. It's really important that lots of people are involved in all of this. So we go back to worship, and I think we're going to sing. Um, I, I chose to do the Lord's My Shepherd because of the, the bit at the end about the banquet and the table before us and thinking of heaven. So let's shift away from uh, welcoming to heaven. Let's stand as the choir is singing the Lord's My Shepherd, the modern version of the 23rd Psalm. be seated we're going to turn we're going to we're going to shift to our time of of prayer for intercession which margaret's going to lead for us uh, and the children have been so prompt this time we're not quite ready for you because it took quite a long time to admit church wardens and uh, and the size people but so it'd be lovely to actually all be involved in praying for one another so we can move off the prayer of confession peter we'll miss that we're going on to the prayers for others thank you so Margaret's going to lead us in prayer, and we've got lots of things we want to pray for. So I hope that if you've been thinking about join, we'll ask Liz to tell us what you've been thinking about in a second. Um, but we're just going to pray together now. So let's just be very quiet as we do that. The response today to the words, keep us faithful, is to your calling. Keep us faithful to your calling. 
Lord, we welcome you into our hearts and lives soon as a tiny babe and one day as our returning glorious saviour. Loving Father, we live through such difficult times at the moment. Keep the church and each one of us strong in our faith let us continue to tell the good news of the coming of the Saviour. Let us comfort the lonely and desolate. Let us actively love justice and draw many to freedom through the joy of your forgiveness. Keep us faithful to your calling. We give thanks for the scientists who have, forward, who have formulated the vaccines and all those who will administer it. We pray for the world that there may be integrity in leadership, mercy and justice for rich and poor, strong and weak, and that there may be peace among nations and respect for all. Keep us faithful to your calling. We place into your hands all those who have been commissioned as church warden and sides people today, that they may meet and greet the congregation and serve the church to the glory of your name. Keep us faithful to your calling. We, the family of believers, pray for all those around us now and for their separate and special needs and for all the families we represent and their separate special needs. Let us never forget that we as individuals and as a team our Christ's representatives on earth, and we should show the love of Christ in all we do and say. Keep us faithful to your calling. In compassion, we call to mind all, all who are still unable to leave their homes, all who are suffering physical or emotional pain, all who are weighed down with worry and guilt and despair. Restore and refresh them, comfort and free them according to your will. From our own parish, we ask your prayers this week, particularly for Michael Pulvermacher, Bob Maxfield, Laura Baller, baby Erica Ivey, Rita Davidson, Ian Wilkinson, Beryl Carr, and Tom Parkinson. Lord, we ask you to love and care and look down on these people especially. Keep us faithful to your calling. We are believers in your resurrection and we commend to your love all who have died to this earthly life. May they and we in our turn experience forever the joy of your eternity. Keep us faithful to your calling. As followers of the living Christ, we praise you for all that has been and will be accomplished by him and rest assured that our lives are and will be filled with the greatest hope of all. Amen. Amen. And so we join together in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Will you stand now for the peace? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So just turn around and wave to people and say hello and peace be with you or how are you or whatever or I'm Jemima or whatever you'd like to say. <laughs> just to make them. <laughs> so we're going to sing again now. Um, we don't take the collection at the moment, but there is a collection plate at the door. We really could do with that, so thank you. So we're going to sing, or the choir, oh, Colours of Day, which is a lovely, I think, children's thing. But it's about Jesus returning, sun returning. Colours of Day, thank you. Thank you. 
please take a seat. And Liz, would you like to come and tell us what the children have been doing? So we've been thinking in Sunday school um, all through Advent, virtually up till today, but now in real life as well, about the Advent wreath. And we've been thinking about the candles that we light. So in the first week we thought about hope, last week we thought about peace, and today we've been thinking about joy, which is why we some joy to the world. Um, and we've been thinking about how joy doesn't make us happy all the time, but it's a kind of contentment in understanding what God's done for us and what we can, like looking at what God's done and how we can kind of be happy about that even if we feel a bit grumpy which we all do sometimes um we were some of us more than others quite excited by our new massive inflatable prayer dice that i've bought this week um so we i because we can't all touch it at the moment kicked it about the hall and we prayed for different things um which i found quite fun emmet kwan found quite fun you know i think it, we, we'll get used to it it'll be fun um and then some of the younger children have made joyful banners. Um, so if you've done joyful banner and it's finished, I know Emily, yours isn't quite finished, is it? If you could hold them up for the adults to see. So we've made joyful banners. And the older children have um, helped me out a bit, really, by thinking of more things we can use our fun new prayer dice to pray for. So they've written me a nice list of things we can thank God for. So some weeks we can just roll the dice and say six thank you prayers. Um, so the older children did that. The younger children made joyful banners. And yeah, we had a nice time. But we were quite quick, it turns out. <laughs> yes, so that's fine. So we're going to give out these. Yeah. So I have two certificates of attendance to give out. Uh, one to Emily Smith and one to Grace Wignall, if they'd like to come and get one at a time, socially distance, <laughs> and I can hand you your certificate and say congratulations. So, uh, oh Grace, you're nearest. Come, let's have Grace. So, rounds of applause, please, when we give them to them. Congratulations, Grace. And Emily? And there's quite a lot to a very close. <laughs> congratulations, well done. Thank you. So just a few other notices. I have just a few. One of these is taken for a few of my Advent free books to take for Bible reading. Please do ask me for one at the end if you'd like one. And I can order some more. They're all free. But one of them is Shelley. So no, <laughs> I'll leave you. I'll leave actually that one there, Shelley. You can have some. We've got two left. So do come and ask if you'd like to do those. Carols by Candlelight is next Sunday. You should, I think almost everybody here... Has, has on email so you should have also got a nice email for me that has a which has got red and black on it and a picture of a crib has everybody got that which came was sent round which just basically tells you about the Christmas services it does say for cows by candlelight we would love everybody to come first come serve served socially distance in church but because the government is saying you can sing properly sing everybody can sing outside some of you younger members might like to come ready to sing outside we'll relay the service outside you'll need to be well wrapped up obviously it's well lit there thanks to bill and jock out there so you might want to come and do that if we're full in church we obviously have no idea how many people are coming or you could even sit do a driving car service some churches are doing that and sit in the car park all sorts of things but make do come along next sunday at six for carols by uh, candlelight and tell other people could you please take from there are lots of leaflets with the services on the back and happy christmas from us um, you might like to deliver some of those and, and and maybe let me know if you think there are people who would like to know about this but who don't get email and we'll make sure we get they get a letter and so on on tuesday evening there is a st michael's first i know it's a first I'm pretty well we're having our a christmas social by zoom i don't think anyone would have done that before in St Michael's. So all you need to do is to get the link. If you're on the electoral roll, you should have got that as well. I sent that out last night. So it, basically you appear on your, you click on your link, you, uh, um, and you have your glass in one hand and your mince pie, however many of the family you want to be there. We're going to sing carols. Carol's going to play. Um, they've, we've even had a Zoom practice for this. She's going to play and will sing. And obviously, we will mute ourselves and we will sing too, so we can join in some of the carols. If you can Zoom, though, you need to pick up a carol sheet because it would be helpful if we were all singing the same words at the same time. 
So you can take a church carol sheet, which was in a pile down there, please, as you leave. We'd like it back next week. Bring it for the carol service. If you can Zoom, do take that with you. Um, Colin Wilson is going to be in charge of our Christmas quiz. Now, quizzes work quite well on Zoom. Some of you will have enjoyed family quizzes. So we're going to try and do that as well. So as many as of you can, do try and Zoom with us on Tuesday evening at 7.30. If you'd like to do it but not sure you can, have a word with me and we'll get some helpers round to get as many people online as possible for that. So that's the Zoom Bible study. Um, and I think that's all I absolutely need to say at this moment, other than saying it's, we're going to do birthdays. Other than birthdays, is there anything else I need to say today? Uh, right, so I know it's Carol's birthday, and if she doesn't mind playing happy birthday to herself, that's fine. But is that, that but before, we do, before we do that, what, is it somebody, who else has had a birthday? Because we haven't done, but we haven't been able to worship. Who's had a birthday in the last, what, what should we say, the last six weeks? If you've, if you've had a birthday in the last six weeks, could you stand up and then we'll sing happy birthday to you and to Carol. Well done, Albie. And anybody else? Anybody else in the last six weeks? Good. Sorry, I've forgotten the name. Erin. Emmett. Sorry, Emmett. Emmett and Albie and anybody else? I'm not looking. Anybody else had a birthday? Who's put... Oh, both... We've just said that. It is Albie, isn't it? I put it right. Yeah, Albie's right. So Albie, Emmett, and sorry, so somebody. Oh yes, I'm sorry, Riley. So four, three boys. Anybody else? You you can be grown ups too, because um, we're doing Carol. Any other grown ups had a birthday? So we'll just say if you three like to stand up. Carol can't stand up because she's playing. We'll just say happy birthday to. Oh, oh right, and I've forgotten. So so Riley's dad's called sorry, David. David thank you, and David. Anybody else? Acknowledge owning up. Okay, so we'll just say happy birthday to you. We won't try and do the names at the moment. So let's just sing. Oh, we can't sing. You'll have to sing to yourself. The choir will have to sing to you, and the rest of us can clap at the end. Thank you. Right, I think that's it for the way we're going to have. We've got one final hymn, which is about, as a great Advent hymn, Judge Eternal, to finish off with, and there'll be a final prayer at the end. So please, will you stand for Judge Eternal? May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be with you and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. So if I can just explain what's going to happen now, if you're a sides person and if you've got time for the families as well, just to hear a few words, to stay behind and uh, just sit in your pure weight, the, I think that the confirmation class people are going to go upstairs, are they? So if you could just wait till they've cleared upstairs and then if you go upstairs, confirmation people, um, Peter will go to the door and I'll come to the door for the first bit and then I'll come back and we'll do, once everybody's out, we'll do the, uh, the, the sidesman bit. So lovely to see you all and look forward to seeing you next Sunday.